Good evening to those bored enough to watch. In a previous video, I discussed the first FNAF game and how it was amazing at both immersing the player into the world that it establishes, enhanced through the extensive use of audio, while also creating entertaining gameplay that anyone is bound to find interesting. The first game was a game that took the internet by storm, and rightfully so. With the game being as good as it was, it deserved the recognition it got. This game was amazing and it was a great contribution to the horror genre of gaming. However, Scott Cawthon didn't plan on letting the momentum he built with that first game stop there, and released a great sequel that sought to enhance refine and add to the foundation that the first game had built, Five Nights at Freddy's 2. This game is one that I managed to actually play for myself around the time it came out, as opposed to sitting on a couch getting scared alongside the YouTuber I watched play it. Of course, back then I was definitely very intimidated by the game, and while I do remember making it past the fifth night, it took a lot of courage to even open the game and play anything past the opening menu screen. I'm now here nearly eight years later. With that fear aspect of the game being gone, I find that I'm able to enjoy this game from a new perspective. Shortly after the release of the first game, Scott Cawthon, the developer of these games, began to confirm rumours of a sequel to the game. Fast forward to a month after the first game's release, Scott Cawthon would go on to release numerous teasers for the game on his blog, before ultimately releasing a trailer for the game on October 21st in 2014. He would then get a full release of the game in November of that same year, earlier than its planned release date of Christmas of that same year. Ports of the game would also be released to iOS and Android devices on the 12th and 20th of that same year respectively, and on the 29th of November in 2019, the games were ported to Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the version initially released to Steam in 2014. This game is phenomenal, a good game that seeks to build upon the first game, and that adds to it in so many ways, in terms of difficulty, visuals, and so much more. So with that, let's discuss Five Nights at Freddy's 2. FNAF 2 is a game that changes things significantly from the first game, which while definitely does keep the same concept of avoiding the animatronics and refraining them from entering your office, this game changes things in a way so that they can get more closer to you, giving not only you more opportunities but less time to react to them, but also for them, more opportunities to jump scare you. This game also adds new animatronics to the game. The original four are still here but in a withered state, and accompanying them are six other animatronics who you also need to keep your eye on and prevent them from entering your office. Before we get into the five main nine, I'm going to quickly go over the animatronics once again, as in this game the four returning ones work differently to how they did in the previous game, as well as the additional six, who also function differently to them too. Freddy, Bonnie and Chica will gradually make their way to your office, and when they do you'll find you're either forced out of your monitor and need to quickly put on a mask throughout this blackout segment when they're seemingly wandering into and out of your office. Failure to be quick enough when putting it on, or putting it on at all, would result in a jump scare from either of the three. Foxy, on the other hand, works a little differently. You see, in the first game, the only thing you needed to worry about was keeping an eye on Foxy relatively infrequently due to how his AI worked. You only need to do so occasionally just to see the position he was in. But in this game, things work a little differently. As opposed to having Foxy wait to sprint at you from a certain location, in this game he'll jump scare you if you fail to flash your light at him in the hallway. And believe me, you need to be doing this very, very frequently. And while when you do learn how his AI works, things definitely get a lot easier as you take more liberties in terms of what you can and can't do without being jump scared. But Foxy is definitely a lot more of a threat in this game than he was previously, as you need to actively be keeping your eye on him throughout the duration of the night to avoid being jump scared. With the original four animatronics out of the way, let's discuss new animatronics that debut as a threat in this game. But first, let's get this out of the way. This game is very different compared to the first game in the sense that as opposed to having the doors that you need to close upon seeing an animatronic, you now need to check the vents for any animatronics entering the room. And while some may enter through the hallway, a majority will enter through that of the vents, which is why you need to regularly check the vents for their presence and put on the mask whenever you run into them. Speaking of which, which is also an addition to this game. I mentioned earlier that you need to wear the mask for any blackout segments in the game which see an animatronic entering your office. One thing I will say is that throughout the duration of this game, you are going to want to get used to instinctively throwing on the mask after doing things like checking your cameras, as they lessen the likelihood of you dying due to failure to react quickly enough to an animatronic's presence in the office. This game also adds the music box that you need to keep winding throughout the night to avoid the puppet jump scaring you. The music box will gradually go down faster as the game goes on. Toy Bonnie, Toy Freddy and Toy Chica debut in this game as the new and improved animatronics from the first game. Toy Chica will gradually make her way to your office. It's up to you to continuously be checking the vents for her as she won't initiate a blackout segment akin to the other two. Toy Bonnie will mostly akin to that of Toy Chica. However, once you notice him in the vents, you'll need to throw on the mask to avoid him jump scaring you. When you do put on the mask in his presence, he'll initiate
initiate a blackout segment before ultimately leaving you alone. Toy Freddy acts akin to that of the withered animatronics, who initiate a blackout segment upon entering your office. There's also the mangle, who will indicate their presence whether that be on the camera or in the vents with a static noise, which upon hearing when they're in the vent, you'll need to put on the mask and wait for it to go away before it's safe again. Then there's Balloon Boy, who akin to some others will gradually make his way to the vents, and when spotted in there you need to put on the mask and wait for him to go away. Failure to do so will result in him entering the office and jamming your light, meaning you can't check the lights in either of the vents of the hallway, this leaves you open to the likes of Toy Bonnie or whatever animatronic may be in there, especially that of Withered Foxy, who you'll need to flash your light at to keep him at bay. There's also Golden Freddy, who will randomly appear at times, very rarely in the hallway and in the office, in which you need to put on your mask to get rid of him. If you spot him in the hallway, try not to flash your light at him for too long or too much, as he will jump scare you for doing so. Keep in mind that Golden Freddy isn't necessarily as much of a threat compared to the other animatronics, especially if you know what you're doing. With that introduction to the gameplay out of the way, let's now discuss the nights you'll play through in this game. The first night is very, very easy, with the animatronics not really coming to you until later in the night, and seemingly only three, that being Toy Bonnie, Toy Chica, and Toy Freddy, of them coming out to get you. This night isn't anything too difficult and gives you not only enough time to learn the layout of the new additions to the game, but the new layout of the restaurant. With that, we move on to night two. This night, while definitely increasing the intensity to some degree, isn't very difficult compared to the first night, though do keep in mind that you will see more animatronics being active compared to the first night, especially towards the end of the night. After that, we move on to the third night, of which sees more activity from the likes of the Withered animatronics, especially that of Withered Bonnie, as well as further increased activity from the toy animatronics as well. Still, it isn't anything too difficult, and we move on to the fourth night. This night definitely does see things getting a lot more intense, as once again more animatronics arise and become significantly more active during the night, especially that of the Withered animatronics, and especially Foxy. So much so to the point where I ended up running out of batteries more towards the end of the night. After that though, we move on to night 5. Night 5 is definitely one of the more difficult nights and is the peak of the difficulty increasing throughout the main 5 nights of the game. A lot more animatronics are going to show up here, and at times you will be at risk of dying here too. For example, more towards the end of the night, my battery had almost fully died completely, and I had to go through more than 2 hours of the final night with little battery power. This night is difficult, and while you may die a lot while completing it, it is still very much possible. And that is the main 5 nights of this game. I found them very interesting to play through and I also adore how the game adapts what worked in the previous game and adds to it more to enhance the experience of this game. Another thing I also want to bring up is that of the phone calls that you receive during the game, and how they definitely tie in a lot more to the game's story among other details we'll see in due course. In Night 5 specifically, you're told that the building is currently in lockdown. Keep this in mind, as it will be important later. With that, I want to discuss some of the extras in this game. The extras in this game are also a lot more plentiful compared to the first game. In the first game, the only thing you are really incentivized to do is to beat the 420 mode, but here this game expands upon that by adding custom night presets that you're to try and complete. While completing the 420 preset does give you your third star on the main menu, beating all of the presets will give you a plushie on your desk for each one that you complete. Even if small, I like the way that this game incentivizes completing these custom nights. I personally did them all because I enjoyed playing this game a lot, even if I lost a large amount of my sanity to beat them. But before we get to that, we need to discuss the 6th night, which you must complete before unlocking the custom nights. Night 6 opens with the now worried phone guy calling you and asking you what you're doing there that someone had used a spare yellow suit, and now that none of the animatronics are acting as they should. Scott, once again voicing the phone guy, does a very good job as the phone guy, and I'm actually a bit glad we got to see more of his character specifically as he ends up dying in the first game. With that, Night 6 is definitely a bit of a challenge, as the animatronics are more aggressive than ever. After completing Night 6, we once again get paid, showing the date, 1987. Now, it's here that we find out that this game is actually a prequel to the first game, as while the end screen in that game never actually showed us the date, it's implied that it takes place after 1987. Once again, I'm not going to go into the lore of this game. I'd rather not open that can of worms in this video. I have quite a bit to say about this franchise's lore, but I'll save that for a future video should I ever decide to make it. However, now with Night 6 over, I want to discuss the custom nights a bit more. As I mentioned earlier, there are two different custom night presets that eventually lead up to the 1020 mode. This game genuinely does a good job expanding upon this aspect of the game. I played all of the custom night presets, clearly seen through here, and FNAF 2's main difficulty in terms of the custom nights is that of the 1020 mode, otherwise known as the Golden Freddy mode. Pretty ironic considering how 
he's the least threatening animatronic in this game. But before that, we can play through presets such as that of the 420 mode, which consists of the original 4 animatronics being set to 20, and a multitude of others. For the sake of this video, I decided to redo one of them, and it's still definitely a bit of a challenge, but once you get used to the pattern, it gets a lot more easier. With that, let's discuss 1020 mode. This mode is definitely one of the most difficult nights in this game, and believe me, I tried very, very hard to. Animatronics like Foxy and Toy Bonnie seriously begin to become a problem as the night progresses. While Foxy can't attack you during blackout, he can after, and this definitely makes the night a lot more difficult with the strategy I was using. See, given how Foxy can't attack you during blackouts, and in this night specifically you will run into an abundance of them, I had to keep the mask on for just slightly longer, as if you do so then it eliminates the need to check the other vent, meaning you can solely keep your eye on the vent that Toy Bonnie comes from. Toy Bonnie also makes an abundance of appearances throughout this night, showing up in the vents randomly, showing up immediately after I just got blacked out, meaning I have to go through his blackout, and that subsequently leads to me getting jump scared by Foxy. Or that he appears during the most inconvenient times possible, meaning I can't wind the music box enough and I end up getting killed by the marionette. These factors that I've just described, among many other things, are the reason I'm still yet to beat this night. While it definitely was fun, despite taking half of my sanity, trying to beat it, it definitely wasn't within my skill level. It's possible, don't get me wrong, I'm probably just bad at the game. I mean, you could have just edited the files, but you wouldn't do that, would you? You're not a coward, right? With that, I want to conclude things. Overall, I think that FNAF 2 is a massive improvement to the first game, in which while that game was great, I feel as though that this game adds and changes a lot more to distinguish itself, but not so much to the point where it's jarring to play. It definitely does help keep the consistency, which was something that was probably within the franchise's best interest to maintain at the time considering this was only the second game into the series. The game, while changing things such as there no longer being doors to shut and instead needing to rely on checking the vents and adding things such as that of more animatronics to deal with, the mask, the music box and much more, doesn't lose the charm that made the first game great. And if anything, I seriously do like the way that this game is executed. I think that if you enjoyed the first game, then this game is definitely worth your time. This game truly takes what worked with the previous entry and elevates that to the next level, with more animatronics, more mechanics, and more timeless memories with a great game. For those who haven't played this game, then I implore you to do so. And if you enjoy these types of games, then FNAF 2 will be worth your time and money. So, there's the video, I hope you all enjoyed it. This video has been quite the video to make, but I hope you all enjoyed it nonetheless. I'm sorry that this video took a lot longer to come out than I think it would. I'll be trying to close that gap a lot more going forward. Despite the way, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see the videos I want to do in the future, then there will be a link to a list outlining as such in the description. If you want to follow me, then my socials will be linked in the description, as well as any afterthoughts or messages I may want to add. But that, I haven't really got much else I want to say, so I'll see you all in my next next video. I hope you all enjoyed the video and I wish you all a very pleasant evening.